We are already seven games into the season. We've got a couple of huge matchups to start the month of September. And another transfer window has slammed shut and we did some stuff. Welcome back, everyone, to episode 12 of Lionhearted, the return of TSV 1860 Munich. We are in our second season trying to push to get out of the Dritte Liga into the second Bundesliga. We're going to take a look to see how we've done since the last episode in just a second, but I want to show you the reason why we were a little bit more active than we originally planned to be at the end of the summer transfer window. The big one is the injury to Albion Vernetzi, our star winger picking up some sprained knee ligaments in a match in the middle of August. Out two to four weeks, it's looking closer to the forks. It's already been two, and he is not coming back yet. So we found ourselves a little bit weak on the wing. Also, Sammy Belkaya, uh, he pulled a thigh. He's going to be out for about... Uh, Three to eight days, they say, so they expect him to come back in uh, in about a week or so. Now, he is a fringe player. He is a backup center back, but it's one less backup center back that we have available to us right now. And Daniel Vine, uh, also a fringe player, but he's playing a lot off of the bench in that defensive midfielder position. He bruised the foot. He's only going to be out a couple of days, so that's not that big of a deal. But we also realized that our midfield was not as strong as we would have liked, especially in attack. Uh, a lot of the guys that we had available to play in front of our number six, they were really more defensive-minded, so we had to make a couple of moves. First, before we get to all of that, we're going to take a look at uh, see where we are right now. First in the competition, we're currently sitting in fourth place. We've won five. We've uh, drawn none. We did lose two. We'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, plus eight goal difference, sitting on 15 points, only four points off of Dortmund, too, who is in first place, and they are going to be our first match of the episode here today. But how have we done so far? Obviously, we saw the wins against Energy Cottbus and VFB Oldenburg. We did take on Dinamo Dresden. We lost 3-2. This was a match on the road. We went up against their 4-2-3-1, and we just we did not have uh, a great day. I mean, we started off in the lead, 1-0, with a ninth-minute uh, goal by Finn Lockemacher. At the time, it was his seventh of the season. Remember, he was coming off of a pair of hat tricks in the first two games of the year. But then Stefan Kuchki just tore us apart with goals in the 26th and 39th minutes to put them up 2-1. Lockemacher did get one back a couple of minutes into the second half to tie it up at two, but we just we could not go on. And as you'll see in the 54th minute, that's when we lost Albion Vernetzi, and things just kind of snowballed from there. Immediately after that, we did meet Wolfsburg in the first round of the DFB Pokal, taking on a side from the Bundesliga. And again, it started off so well for us. Uh, we did rotate the squad just a little bit. We gave uh, Lockenmacher a rest. He was very tired. This game only came a couple of uh, days after the previous match against Dinamo Dresden. Stefan Lex did start off the scoring with a couple of minutes left in the first half to put us up 1-0. And we were looking really, really good, but then we just lost steam. A goal by Jonas Vind in the 73rd minute tied things up. We thought we were going to get through to penalties, but Jakob Kaminski scoring in the second minute of added time gave Wolfsburg the 2-1 victory, and we are out of the DFB Pokal once again after the first round of the season. But this time, we did not get destroyed by Bayern Munich like we did last year. So positives. We were able to follow things up with a pair of victories against uh, Saarbrücken and RW Essen, 2-0 and 2-1, uh, before we lost again oh, at home, this time to newly relegated squad Heidenheim. They beat us 2-1. We were just flat offensively. Antonios Papadopoulos picking up our only goal that came in the 34th minute. And then our final match... Uh, before the game tonight, the final match before the end of the transfer window closing was a 2-1 victory on the road at Beirut. Pair of goals for Stefan Lex again in that one in the 65th and 81st minutes. Which brings us 
to the transfers. We realized we had weaknesses on the wing, you know, especially in a reserve spot with Fonetzi out. We also had weaknesses in the midfield, so we went to address that. We started off by picking up Philip Schultz from Mainz on loan, the 18-year-old specializing in that defensive midfield position that he's probably going to share uh, potentially with Tim Reader, although Tim Reader may move back into the central defense again, which is a space he occupied at the very beginning of last year before the emergence of Leandro Morgala. Very strong defensively. He's very resilient. He's versatile. He can play on that back line. He can play in a more advanced position as well, and he may even have the potential of being a regular Bundesliga player, so we may look at potentially bringing him on more permanently at the end of the season. Now, to address our winger issue, we did bring in a 20-year-old out of Algeria, Yunus Aitamar. Uh, he can play on either wing, although he does prefer the right-hand side. Uh, he's good with the ball. He's got a little bit of pace to him. He's more of a, of a backup. He's not really a permanent, you know, First team solution, uh, but he's definitely going to give us a little bit more depth in that position, which is something that we sorely, sorely needed. Taylan Duman, a 26-year-old out of Turkey, also in on loan. He comes to us from Nuremberg. Uh, very good as that advanced playmaker role, which is, I feel, where we were really lacking as far as moving the ball, linking up play from uh, the number six all the way to Finn Lockenmacher. So he's in there. He's a very good passer. He's got great vision. He uh, loves to be a, a team player. He's good with uh, free kicks as well. Very consistent, very balanced. He's got the speed. And he's a very good player for us right now. And he's going to be with us until the end of the season. We also picked up 25-year-old Patrick Sondheimer on a free. As you can see, he can play any position up the middle of the pitch, just giving us a lot of added depth. And he's really going to, I think, slot in well in that more box-to-box -box midfielder role, uh, playing in that pairing with a guy like uh, Duman or or maybe even Kobolanski, whoever's in there at that time. He has the potential to be a good player in the league above. He's very consistent, nice high work rate, very determined, and he loves those big matches. And then finally, help in the back in the form of 27-year-old Adam Zwizgala. He can play either right back or center back. He can even help out in the defensive midfield. He's very consistent. He's got some speed. He's six foot one, 176 pounds. He can get up in the air. Great work rate again. Great tackling. Nice positioning. He's going to be a very welcome addition to that back line. Of course, a couple of players did need to go out. The first was Nicholas Long, uh, one of our backup center backs, 21 years old. He got an offer from Gornick Zabrizi. We originally turned it down. He got upset because he really wanted to go there, apparently. Uh, so we asked them for more money than we really thought he was worth, and they actually agreed. So we sold him for a total of uh, 750,000 euros with add-ons. A couple of players going out on loan. Uh, Jerome Schultz, uh, an 18-year-old. He's a left back. Uh, right now, he's kind of buried in the depth chart behind uh, Klein Hunsel, uh, Steinhardt, even Lannert, who's still around, uh, Freitag. Uh, so we moved him out on loan to Amartal for the season, uh, develop him a little bit more. You know, he is only 18 years old. Also, Leonard Johans, another 18-year-old, uh, this time a center midfielder. Uh, again, we felt like his development might be hampered sitting on the bench with us, so we moved him to SU Nekarsum for the remainder of the year as well, just to uh, help him improve. But the big move out was Jesper Verlat. Much like Leandro Morgala last year, Verlat had a sniff of something bigger and better, and it got to the point where he was not happy with the club, and we could not keep him. He was not concentrating on his job here as he was looking away, so we did make the move. We sold him to Fortuna Dusseldorf. 250,000 euros is all we were able to get. Uh, we tried to get the best offer that we could, but he was so upset. He was like, I want to be sold, and this is the price you should sell me at. And that's where he is. So he's now in the second Bundesliga. He got his wish. He's got a bigger club. He's at Fortuna. And, of course, we made those other moves in an attempt to replace him. Hopefully, we're going to be successful. And even though the transfer window was closed in Germany... We were able to get one more deal done. Christopher Lannert on his way to Krakowia. He didn't want to be with us. 
he had also fallen way down on the depth chart. We weren't selecting him for the squad. He was occasionally making the bench if there was an injury and we decided it was time for the 25 year old to move on 20,000 euros is what we got and he has a new team and we no longer have a problem and with the departure of our captain Verlot and our vice captain Christopher Lannert we do have new leadership on the squad wearing the captain's armband for now and forever will be Finn Lockenmacher. The vice captain is going to be Florian Kleinhansel. And here is how we are going to line up as we take on Dortmund 2 at home to start the month of September. It's going to be Kretzmar in goal with Kleinhansel, Papadopoulos, Zuigala making his debut and Podolski in front of him. Tim Reeder will anchor the midfield. In front of him will be Schultz and Taylan Duman. Resic is going to be on the left wing side. Kobolanski will slot in on the right. Finn Lockenmacher will be leading the line. So because of results that happened since the last time we looked at the league table and today, Dortmund has actually fallen into second place. We remain in fourth as Podolski is going to deliver it in. Jakob Rezic will head it in just a minute, five seconds in. Off of the corner, Rezic, it's going to be disallowed. They disallowed it on the corner. I really wish I got a better view of that and maybe a replay. I don't know. But we're going to restart here in the ninth minute. Taylan will drop it back for Reader. He's got Schultz with a lot of space and time to work with. Throwing it forward. Taylan is in. Taylan has scored his first goal of the year. Taylan Duman. Brand new signing on his debut. Makes it 1-0 1860. And that's not enough points for us to move past Dortmund. Dortmund was four points ahead of us heading into this match today, but it is a very, very good start. They say it was the tight offside. He was on sides. He was on sides. Dortmund uh, is going to you know hold on to that second place. There we go as the table refreshes itself. So we're on 18. We're still two points behind Dinamo Dresden, uh, but we are looking to move up the table. Our next match is in this episode is going to be against Majberg, who right now is sitting in fourth place on 15 points. They are currently uh, going to be playing a little bit later on today. They've got Erzgeberg on the road. So we may be even on points at the end of that match. We'll see how things shake out. As we are 30 minutes in, it's still 1-0. It should have been 2. I don't know how that goal got disallowed. They didn't even give us the opportunity to take a look, but... All that matters is we are winning right now as we move into the final five minutes before halftime as Taylan is going to send it long on a free kick, headed away, chased down by Lockenmacher. Dwizgala will get it back to him, played back for Kleinhansel. Lockenmacher, it's got Reader, feeds Taylan ahead. Taylan is in and he hits the post and it goes out. There'll be a free kick for Dortmund. So far, so good. We've created a ton and the scoreboard does reflect that. As we look to get the second half underway, Dortmund is going to make a change at halftime. They're getting outshot 6-2. to two. They're getting outpossessed 2-1. to one. And this is the game that 1860 Munich needs to play. This is what we need to show consistently match week in and match week out. As uh, Duizgala just picked up a yellow card, but he's playing pretty well. And they're going to give away a free kick in a pretty dangerous position here. Six men on the wall as Dortmund looks to get some other guys in place as Fane is going to send it in. He's going to send it over the crossbar, graze the top. It's fine. Duman is playing very well on his debut, but he's a little bit tired. So we're going to move Kobolanski back into that advanced playmaker role and bringing on the right-hand side, we'll bring in uh, Eunice Eitamar, uh, we just talked about him a little bit before as we were reviewing the transfers. Also, Jakob Rezic having an okay game. I mean, he had the header that was disallowed, uh, but Stefan Lex is going to come in in his place. Our super sub is going to make an appearance as we make a couple of changes uh, with about 16, 17 minutes left to go. Let's uh, see if they can make an impact, maybe increase our lead. 1-0, uh, don't really feel super comfortable. Just being up one, Dortmund is a strong squad. I mean, they came in here. Uh, they were four points ahead of us. Now currently just one. As we get into the final six, seven minutes of the match, we're just going to mess with our instructions a little bit. We're going to 
We're going to waste a little bit of time. We're going to uh, knock the tempo down just a tad. Uh, we're going to play for set pieces, which should also waste a little bit of time. And we will uh, we'll drop off more in our line. We'll give them a little bit more space to operate in the middle of the pitch. Uh, so hopefully they can get complacent. We can get maybe some counterattacking going on. Uh, five minutes to be added on. Still Munich holding on to that 1-0 lead over Dortmund. And I think I think we're going to do it. There's one minute left. Uh, we've hit the 95 minutes. Time has expired. And one goal was all we needed. Taylor Dumont on his debut, scoring in the ninth minute, picking up his first goal of the season. Hopefully the first of many as 1860 Munich is continuing to make that march towards not only the top of the table, but the second Bundesliga for next year. Most of our team has had plenty of time to rest up as we did hit an international break following the Dortmund game. Vernetzi did fail a fitness test. He's got a bit of a setback. He's still going to be out probably for another two weeks, uh, but that's okay. The table has had a few changes. Magdeburg did win that match against Erzgebirge, uh, so they went ahead of us again on goal difference. Essentially, they sit in third place. We are in fourth. Starting to see some distance between the top four already and five all the way down. Already a five-point lead over Vehen Weisbaden, currently sitting in fifth place, along with FSV Zwickau and Würzburger Kickers. Uh, Dinamo Dresden did play the day before, so most of the match are happening uh, on this day, this Saturday. Uh, there was Friday Night Football. Dinamo Dresden drew 2-2 against the Hollisher, so they are only three points ahead of us. So there is a chance with a victory today we could end up on the top of the table. And we've decided there will be no changes uh, from the starting 11 that began the game against Dortmund. It's going to be Kretschmar in goal with a back four of Klein Hansel, Papadopoulos, Zwigalia, and Podolski with Reeder at the base of the midfield. Taylan and Schultz ahead of him. Rezek on the left. Kopolanski on the right. And Finn Lockemacher up top. The only difference between this lineup and the one that took on Dortmund is Kieran Mull is going to be taking a position on the bench. And Philip Antofsky, who just picked up a red card in the game suspension in the Euro qualifiers during the international break, uh, he's going to be moved out of the squad for this match. So it's a three versus four matchup at Magdeburg, 1860 Munich. The winner of this with the opportunity to go to the top of the table. Magdeburg in decent form. They have won three of their last five. In fact, their last three games in a row. Uh, we've won four of our last five, so we are in great shape as it's thrown forward. Left wing side for Resic, moving into the corner. Stops laying it back for Taylon. Takes it to the byline. He's going to get it to Rezik now. Klein Hansel for Lockenmacher. He'll lose control. Sent out. Reader can't get there. Schuler will play it to Klaus. And Monsberg's going to come the other way as Klaus will bring it up that far sideline. Dropping it back for Reekman. Mueller is there. He's going to be challenged and he's going to lose it to Rezik. Klein Hansel's got it for Schultz. Finds Kobolanski. Kobolanski pushing it forward. He's got Finn Lockenmacher. Lockenmacher in off of the crossbar into the goal. Goal number 10 on the year for Finn Lockenmacher. And once again, 1860 Munich starting off a match very strong and picking up the one nil lead is Kobolanski with it in the middle. Lockemacher splits the defense, beats the goalkeeper, hits the crossbar. It does go in for his 10th of the year, and it's 1-0, 1860 Munich. And I let my reverie get away from me. Finn Lockemacher injured in the match. He was our goal scorer on our first shot of the match as well. Uh, he's going to come off. Hopefully it's not going to be too severe, but Stefan Lex is going to step in. We're going to have faith in him that he can make the difference, uh, but Stefan Lex not used to playing this much football as he comes in in the 13th minute. Up 1-0. Let's, let's hope that maybe he can be our goal scorer of the match and just slot right in, and it'll be like Lockenmacher never left. One can hope. Magdeburg is going to gain control now in the midfield, though, as we have passed the 30-minute mark. Played to Ganaka. He'll lay it back for Lawrence, who will take the easy route and go back to the goalkeeper, who gets it back from Reekman. Ahead again for Lawrence. They're going to try the left-wing side. Roche plays to Quartang. He's got a man in the middle, but he's met and has to play it back to Ganaka, who will move it up the sideline. All the way to Klaus Heber with a shot, and that's going to trickle wide. It'll be a goal kick for Munich. And... Uh, 
little bit of uh, offensive activity for Magdeburg in front of nearly uh, 21,000 fans here as they look to control again in the midfield. Just 10 minutes left in this half. Ritter's going to play it up for Rothart. Farteg knocked away by Reeder. Podolski will gain control. Gets it back from Kobolanski. Reeder has it. Podolski now. Moving forward in a little bit of trouble is Vigala. Reeder. Back for Papadopoulos as Munich is going to try the left-hand side. Klon Hansel ahead for Rezik. Pushing it forward. The defense is retreating. Played back for Klein Hansel. Throwing it again back to Rezik in that left corner. Talon's got it in the middle. Kobolanski will drill it home for his fifth goal of the year. Martin Kobolanski has had a fantastic game so far. And Munich now with a 2 0 lead. Klein Hansel throwing it forward. Rezik is there. He's going to find Talon just at the edge of the box. What a cross along the grass by Talon. He finds Kobolanski near the penalty spot. Kobolanski finds pay dirt, his fifth of the year. It's 2 0 Munich. We're tied with Dinamo, but Dortmund has taken over first place. As, as we just keep going up, and then somebody else does something good. So it's really going to be a dogfight for these top four spots for most of the season, I think. Hopefully, Finn Lockemacher isn't going to be uh, gone for very long. So far, the team has rallied around their captain, and 2-0 uh, is your score as we move into the second half. We're currently sitting in that third place position, so we are in that playoff spot that we were chasing all last year, but we really want one of those automatic promotion spots. Another goal here, we'll do it at least for now, just nine games into the season, uh, but with only 18 teams, or I'm sorry, 20 teams in the league, only 38 games. It's possible. Just about 15 minutes left to go. And, of course, we are going to be making some changes. This time, Philip Schultz is going to be the one to get the break as Dumont is having a fantastic game so far. He assisted on that second goal for Kopolanski. So Marco Manhart is going to come in and take his place. And that's really going to be the only change that we are going to make. Obviously, we already made the change with Finn Lockenmacher. So we're going to have one more opportunity if we want to, to make a few more changes. But right now, the team is playing like a very well-oiled machine, and we don't want to throw anything to uh, gum up those works. Uh, we are losing the possession battle, which is a little bit surprising, but we do have the edge on shots. We definitely have the edge in shots on target. We've hit the target 70% of the time tonight, uh, moving into the final seven minutes of this match, and it looks like Barring you know, anything crazy as we you know go waste a little bit more time, we're going to do our normal uh, change of instructions to get things going here uh, as we try to play out the string in this match. Just a couple of minutes left to go and hold on to this 2-0 lead. Uh, Kretzmar has been good in goal, but he has had the penchant to uh, let a few in uh, and not really keep the clean sheet, but he's able to do that tonight. 2-0 is your score. Munich over Magdeburg. Not a bad episode, actually. We probably gave the wrong team talk because we were too busy uh, wrapping things up here. So hopefully we haven't ticked uh, too many people off. Just one point off of the top of the table. Dortmund has that position right now. We are tied with Dinamo Dresden, not only on points, but also on goal difference. They are only ahead of us because they beat us earlier in the season. So we're going to need to move ahead of them. We're going to need to beat them the next time we play. Which, by that time comes, hopefully we are sitting alone on top. Let's uh, let's knock on wood. All right, the news for Finn Lockenmacher wasn't nearly as good as we would have hoped. He's going to be out for uh, three to five weeks as he pulled a calf muscle in that game. We're going to leave him up to the physio and hope that he gets better real, real soon. Thank goodness we signed a lot of reinforcements around the pitch. So hopefully we are going to be okay. Well, hoping we could avoid the entry bug again, but I guess that was uh, not meant to be. We're going to advance forward, see if we can maintain our top of the table position and keep our eye on the prize, which is the second Bundesliga. We're going to come back in the month of November. We're going to get our first look at two new squads here, Würzburger Kickers and the Werder Bremen second team. So I hope to see you there on Monday. Thank you very much for joining us for this 12th episode of TSV 1860 Munich. I hope you've been enjoying it. Whether you have or not, please help us out. Give a big like and that thumbs up on the video. Appreciate it. Also, 
If you want to be notified when the next episode comes out, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Anything you can do to help us out would be greatly appreciated. Uh, we're very hard for this, and we really do uh, hope that you are enjoying our journey as we're trying to get back to the Bundesliga. So we hope to see you next week with episode 13 and more action with TSV 1860 Munich. Until then, bye-bye.